Hey, this is Ryan with Hayes Fat. In this video, we're gonna build a deer feeder. I'm gonna put all the cut links, materials, and degrees in the description below so you'll have all that. And make sure you hit the subscribe button. So to build this project, we're gonna need a weld machine, a grinder with some cutoff wheels, speed square, and a tape measure. Normally, if you have access to a weld machine, you probably have all the rest of the tools that you're gonna need. I use a couple different tools in this video just because they're more efficient and I like saving time and I own stuff like a chop saw. So, uh, but some of the cuts we will have to make with the uh, cut, uh, the grinder and the cutoff wheel. But yeah, stay tuned and we'll get this thing put together. All right, so we have all of our. Uh, or four cut out for our base of the barrel, where the base of the barrel is gonna sit. And we cut those off at a 45 degree. Now we have our two skis, then we have our four legs. And what we're gonna make sure that we do on our skis, we wanna come in three inches. So we come in three inches and mark that. So now put our speed square right there. Go ahead and mark it all the way down. So we got that marked. So now we're gonna leave this pivot right here and bring it up till we have our degrees on this side and it, we're gonna come to 22 and a half degrees so we're still right there in the center right there we got that right there we keep moving okay we're good now so we're gonna mark that and we're gonna need to do it the same way to the other side but there's really not a great way to do it just because we're out of material on that side so we're just gonna measure from our center point to how far we came out on that other one. So we got seven eighths of an inch. So we're gonna come over here, line up seven eighths on this side, mark that, then come to our center point and line it up to our seven eighths mark that we just put down there and mark that. So we're gonna wanna do that on both sides of our skis. Then we're done with the skis. And then on our, On our leg, what we're gonna wanna do is come from the bottom, have it pivoted right there. We're gonna dial it out to 22 and a half. Okay, so we got it right there. We got that mark. We're gonna do it to the same, same as the other side now. We get it marked right there. Dial it down to our 22 and a half. And we mark that. So once we get that cut out, it's gonna lay back nice and easy. I wish that was something I could do on the chop saw, but it's really, uh, my chop saw's not made to make that cut. So let's get that cut out and go from there. Just in case you haven't had a lot of experience with a cutoff wheel, they are pretty dangerous and they can explode very easily. So be very cautious using them. I'm using the safety glasses and squint technique, which doesn't help for anything. But make sure you always have these sparks going back to your side. And uh, if you try to have them going in front of you or any other direction, it will kick back and it's very dangerous. So, little forewarning for you. But yeah, we're just going to cut all these legs out, cut all the notches out, then uh, cut all the 22 and a half for the legs, and we're going to keep on trucking.
I believe we're ready to do some tacking. So the welding machine we're welding with today is a Hobart MVP 210 and it's a good little weld machine i really like it for the price point and all that you really can't beat it you can weld on 210 or 230 here we're welding on 230 volt uh some 035 wire and some uh, uh 75 25 gas mix uh that little jig that i'm using that i got clamped down my um very sturdy work table is a it's a fireball tool i, I believe it's a mega square but you just kind of can put your angles in there or put your your pieces you're trying to weld and it'll kind of if you go off it as a reference like you'll wind up building it square but here i'll check it and uh really like that thing so shout out to the, the fireball So I build a lot of these deer feeders and normally I build them in a jig that I, I built. So uh, just to make a video on like having or helping other people make a deer feeder like this, like this would be the best that I came up with is uh, putting the 22 and a halfs on there. So we're just going to kind of flush up the outside edge of our angle iron on the outside edge of our base. And once you get that tack, try to move fairly quickly while that weld's still hot and it'll let you move it around but then we're just going to line up the edges of that um, vertical member with the outside edges of the base and just try to get everything pretty symmetrical so just in case that our legs don't get on there perfectly straight when you're building um, if one sticks in too much or one sticks out, but once we put the ski on those legs on the bottom, we can make sure the, the base is level to the, the bottom of the ski. So if one sticks in a little bit more or less, whatever, we can make it work and it's going to be level at the end of it. So that's what matters. So now we have the first panel going in. And before that you cut your panels to the exact length, I would just verify with the base that you build and make sure it's going to fit in there. Um, just, just in case it's off a little bit, which you do have two inches of angle iron for it to sit into, so um, it should fit. But just, just verify and make sure. And uh, so we're going to put these three panels on and i have them sitting on inch and a half square tubing and that inch and a half gap that i'm putting in there is kind of where i'm trying to um that's from the deer feeder in the motor and the timer that we have when that spinner plate when it spins that's where i'm trying to project that corn through so that's why i have an inch and a gap inch and a half gap right there So on this, I almost forgot to weld out the bottom of my angle to the base. And just before you get the, the your top panel put on, it would 100% be easier to get those welded out. So I get the rest of the panels welded up, get the base welded up from the bottom side before I put that panel sheet on.
and I'll just always suggest make sure that that horse panel for the bottom is a little bit long and if you got to trim it up a little bit make it work make it fit it'd be better than cutting a little too short and I throw that fan in there just because uh, breathing that galvanized material is not that good for you so just be careful with that so if you're wondering why we cut that notch in our legs earlier for a ski it's all gonna make sense now so all you need is just a way to secure it you can do it a bunch of different ways so um, but yeah so we're just gonna stick it right here in this vise and bring it back and close up our gap we're going to attack it right there. Oh, yeah. Better. So right here, once we get those tacked up, we're going to weld them out just so it's a lot easier to weld in this position. So get those finished up and we'll go back to the stand. So we figured out this left side was our highest side just because the way that we put it on there might not have been perfect. The way we cut it might not have been 100% perfect, might have been off a degree or whatever. So we tack that left side, then bring the that right side up until it's level. So then we take our four foot level and lay it across the bottom. Then we get that leg level with the other leg. So, and this is all gonna make the base 100% level with the bottom. So it will sit perfectly and level on the ground and as long as you're putting it on a level surface. So, a little trick, I was tired of trying to reach over and looking two foot over at that four foot level, so then I just put my little torpedo level on there. And when you put that little torpedo level on these skis make sure it is flush with the edge just because it's on a little incline right there if you have it off a little bit it will definitely be giving you a wrong angle so just getting the insides welded up right there and once you get the insides welded up you can flip it over and it makes welding everything else out a lot easier so So we have verified that the table's still level with my pipe stand sitting underneath it. Then uh, everything's looking good. So we're to the little weld out stage from the top side. So we're gonna get all these four sides welded up, then get the base good and solid. Then we're just about ready to put the door on there. So yeah.
So I didn't get building the door video in this, but um, I, it'll be in the cut list and all that. So um, just kind of the same right, thing, so just like check and verify, lot. make sure it uh, works for you. We got a center mark on our angle iron that we did with a little combination square. Did both sides, figured out where we want our bottom of our door to be and where the top of the door is gonna be. Then uh, just to make sure we had the right angle, we took this protractor and came in there and found that this angle's 55 and this angle's 35. So just gotta make sure when you lay it all out, you do it right, because you can actually get these backwards and where they won't work. But about to cut that panel down and get it to fit in there, then put some hinges on and we'll, we'll have a door. All right, so we got our panel all cut down and got our hinges tacked on there. We're ready to rock and roll now. Let's get it on. Looks like a final lift. The shim that I was using to kind of gap behind my hinges that I tacked on my uh, door before I put it up there is just a little piece of 16 gauge just to keep it off the door, keep it off the um, your your base for your deer feeder stand. Uh, just keeps everything from rubbing and winds up. Everything will work real nice that way. Little trick, uh, right when you put hinges on, it's a great idea not to, right when you weld, after you weld them, you don't want to open that up because all that metal swelled up, it's swollen, so uh, if you let it cool back down, it'll be nice and easy to open later. So the hinges I use, uh, I get from the same place that I get all my metal supplier stuff from. Uh, you could probably get a buy with using like a little weld on hinge that you can find at uh, Tractor Supply, I'm sure it works great. Uh, this is a latch that I get from my metal supplier also. Pretty cool, little inexpensive latch. We're going to mount it on up here, so it's kind of tucked in behind everything. But then it, it's uh, out of the way, concealed, and easy to get used to. So we just got the hinge put on. It's nice and warm. Ah. Way warm. Regretted that. But yeah. So I won't touch that right there again. But So our gate opens up. Our door. Yeah, no idea. So we're ready for... Uh, Putting a barrel on there and a timer and everything. So we got our base all finished up. It's looking great. And uh, so now we're on to the barrel, put a timer on here. Little trick, I don't, if you know it or if you don't, uh, you can take a, a framing square, then a little smaller framing square, and get the measurement from here to here where it's going to be butted up. And then put you a center mark right here. That's it very easy way to find the center of a circle and you might be wondering like where you're going to find a barrel for your feeding uh you can find them all the time on craigslist facebook marketplace anywhere around like distrib uh, distribution centers like like this barrel had coconut milk in it or something at one point in time so it's pretty readily available to find and you can pick one up probably around like 20 30 bucks somewhere in there that looks pretty good This is a two inch hole saw.
so here I got a little, uh, I like to pre-drill all my holes in these barrels, like uh, most deer feeder timers come with little self-tapping screws, but it's just easy to just pop a hole in there real quick and uh, make sure that you don't over torque them because uh, I got a little Dewalt uh, 12 volt little driver and there's just something I like to use in the shop, but have it turned down low and it's easy not to over torque those little uh little tapping screws in those barrels so just once you get them nice and tight that's all you need the way i like to square up my spinner plate over my funnel is i'll set that timer up there and get it square in front of you with the the spinner plate over the funnel then turn that spinner plate 90 degrees and if you need to do any side to side adjustment then spin it back that other 90 and make sure everything looks good then you can mark your holes up and drill them I didn't get it videoed, but I do normally tack my barrel down to my base just so it doesn't fall off or something like that. We got it all finished up now. All the welding's done, all the cutting's done. I just gotta sweep up the shop. This latch is cooled down enough that I'm not gonna burn my finger on it, so. It works great. Get it up out of the way. We got a six game, six volt wild game innovation timer on there, so. Happy with the way it turned out. Nothing, no complaints whatsoever. Uh, it's too windy to paint today, so I'm not going to get around to that. But I just brought one out that was painted, and uh, it's a, it's same, same thing. But I actually build a lot of these, and uh, I sell a lot of them out on the side. So if it's something you're looking into doing, is making some side cash, like you, you know how to build one now, so. You can definitely hustle up some work doing that. If you got any questions, just let me know. Uh, thanks for making it to the end of the video. Um, if you would subscribe, I got some pretty interesting builds coming up. I'm about to build a fire pit with nothing but just nuts and bolts and scrap metal. So, kind of interested to see how that turns out. It makes a lot of sense in my head, so we'll see. But um, thanks for watching, guys.